Dear students, it is second part of applications of univisible spectroscopy. In this video, I will explain multi-component analysis. In first part, spectrophotometric titrations and single component analysis was discussed. Now let's start multi-component analysis. When simple and accurate calibration curve method is available, then why there is a need for multi-component analysis? The reason is that absorbance of a solution is the sum of absorbance of individual components. It means that whatever we put in the sample covet, UV visible spectrophotometer will give its total absorbance. If our sample solution contains drug molecules as well as excipient molecules, the spectrophotometer will give total absorbance. It cannot distinguish the absorbance of drug molecules from the absorbance of excipient molecules. The measured absorbance is the difference between total absorbance of solution in sample cell from that of solution in reference cell. This is the first reason why multi-component analysis is required. Second reason is, nowadays many drug formulation contains combined dosage form. That means they have more than one drug. If the sample has more than one drug and all of them absorb at same wavelength, then multi-component analysis is required because they are interfering with each other's absorbance. And we will get wrong result. To get correct result, multi-component analysis is required. If the sample carry excipients, impurities and decomposition product which absorb at the lambda max of drug, then also multi-component analysis is required. Because these compounds that is excipient, impurities and decomposition product are also interfering with our drug's absorbance. Now methods of multi-component analysis. First method is simultaneous equation method, Deri difference spectroscopy, derivative spectroscopy, absorption ratio method, geometric correction method, absorption factor method and area under curve method. These are various methods of multi-component analysis. We will go in detail first two method. First method is simultaneous equation method. In, if the sample contains two absorbing drugs like X and Y, each of which absorb at the lambda max of other, it may be possible to determine both these drugs by the technique of simultaneous equation. Because it is difficult to analyze them such sample solution with simple calibration curve method. So one has to go for simultaneous equation method. Here wavelength is on x axis and absorbance is on y axis. Our sample has first drug x drug whose lambda max is 245 nanometer. And uh, our sample has another y drug whose lambda max is 259 nanometer. Now, at 245 nanometer, X drug show maximum absorbance, but Y drug is also showing some absorbance. That means Y is interfering with X absorbance of X drug. At 259 nanometer, Y drug is showing maximum absorbance, but at this wavelength, X drug is also showing some absorbance. It means that X drug is interfering with Y drug's absorbance. So to uh, get correct result, simultaneous equation method is applied. Now here the lambda max of X drug is considered as lambda 1 and lambda max of Y drug is considered as lambda 2. Now we will go for some procedure part of simultaneous equation method. For simultaneous equation method, we require some information and the information is first we should have the absorptivity values of X drug at lambda 1 and lambda 2 
and the absorptivities are ax1 and ax2 respectively now how to get these ax1 and ax2 to get these absorptivity value prepare few dilutions of x a reference standard x drug and measure the absorbance of these solution at lambda 1 and lambda 2 at lambda 1 calculate the absorptivity by using formula absorbance upon concentration and at lambda 2 also calculate the absorptivity absorptivity value and those will be ax1 and ax2 same way get the values of absorptivities of y drug at lambda 1 and lambda 2 those are ay1 and ay2 respectively third information required is uh, the absorbance of dilute sample solution at lambda 1 and lambda 2 and the absorbance value is a capital a1 and capital a2 respectively now by using these six values we can go for calculations the sample contains both x and y drug therefore the absorbance of sample at lambda 1 that is capital a1 will be small ax1 bcx plus ay1 bcy now this equation is based on beer lambert's law which is capital a is equal to small abc capital a absorbance small a absorptivity b is path length and c is concentration the same equation is used in the first equation at lambda 2 the absor absorbance a2 will be ax2 bcy plus ay2 b uh, sorry ax2 bcx plus ay2 bcy here cx and cy are the concentration of x and y drug respectively now these are the final formulas for calculation of drug drug concentration cx is equal to capital a2 ay1 minus capital a1 ay2 upon ax2 ay1 minus ax1 ay2 this is for concentration of x drug cy is equal to capital a1 ax2 minus capital a2 ax1 upon ax2 ay1 minus ax1 ay2 by using these formulas we can calculate the concentration of x and y drug respectively so this is about the simultaneous equation method now we'll go for next method that is difference spectroscopy difference spectrophotometry if the sample has interfering substance like impurities decomposition product or other drug then selectivity and accuracy of method can be improved by this technique in this method the major value is the difference in the absorbance between two equimolar solutions of analyte in different chemical forms which exhibit different spectral characteristic different chemical forms of substance are produced by addition of one or more chemical reagents simple way to prepare different chemical forms of substance is to alter the ph of sample solution by using acid base or buffer now here in different spectroscopy two different solutions of same analyte are prepared but these two different solutions should be equimolar that means concentra concentration should be same but the chemical form of analyte is different so such equimolar solutions are prepared and then their absorbance is measured one example is given here the example is of uh, phenyl epinephrine phenylephrine the solution of phenylephrine in 0.1 molar hcl ph1 and the solution uh, same concentration of phenylephrine in Uh, 0.1 molar NaOH, pH 13. Such two solutions of phenylephrine are prepared. 
In point one molar HCl, the lambda max of phenylephrine is 271 nanometer, and in point one molar NaOH, the lambda max of phenylephrine is 291 nanometer. When acidic solution is placed in reference cell, while alkaline solution is placed in sample cell, we'll get the difference in the absorbance of these two solutions. We'll get delta A is equal to A alkaline minus A acidic. In this way, phenylephrine can be analyzed by difference spectroscopy. Now, chemical derivatization. Uh, this is a, another method of spectrophotometric analysis. Uh, why one should go for chemical derivatization? We'll see in detail about this method. These methods are also known as indirect spectrophotometric assay. The sample is converted into its color derivative by using some reagent. These derivatives have longer lambda max and higher absorptivity value. Now why the requirement of chemical derivatization is there? The first reason, if analyte do not have strong chromophore, that means if our drug do not have very strong chromophore and it, it is not showing strong absorbance in UV visible region, then by using some chemical reaction, a strong chromophore is introduced and then it will give it will convert into colored compound and it will show strong absorbance in UV visible region if interfering substance are there then also chemical derivatization is done to improve selectivity of assay to reduce the cost now colored compounds can be analyzed by colorimeter and colorimeter are less in cost than UV visible spectrophotometer. So cost reduction is there if we go for chemical derivatization. Methods of chemical derivatization. Colorimetric estimation by oxidation, colorimetric estimation by complexation and colorimetric estimation by condensation reaction. Now chemical derivatization is nothing but converting a colorless compound into a colored derivative. So we'll uh, see in detail about the oxidation. Colorimetric estimation by oxidation. Weakly absorbing compounds containing simple phenyl group on oxidation of side chain produce carbonyl derivative. These derivatives have longer have greater absorptivity values than the parent compound. Oxidizing agents such as alkaline potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate or perchlorate solutions are used for oxidation. One example is given here. Ephedrine on oxidation produce benzaldehyde. Ephedrine who has simple phenyl ring and a side chain it is oxidized to give benzaldehyde and benzaldehyde shows strong absorbance at 240, 240 nanometer. So in this way we can convert a weakly absorbing compound into a strongly absorbing colored derivative. So in this way chemical derivatization is performed. So I hope you understood multi-component analysis and chemical derivatization as well. Thank you for watching my video.